What's up, but it's Rob. This is Apparel Success. And if you don't know who I am, I run a Canadian lifestyle brand called KBud that's done multiple six figures in sales for the past four years. I've also worked with thousands of other clothing brands and been studying this hardcore for the past seven years. And what I want to share with you is the secret psychology that's essentially underlying all of these clothing brands. There's some very common psychological tricks and tactics that these successful clothing brands are using that they're aware of and that they're implementing within their clothing brand that very few clothing brands who are just getting started ever come across or are ever aware of. And so I want to share these with you so that you can do it for your own brand. I hope you enjoy. Apparel Success is sponsored by my buds over Design Crowd. You post a project on Design Crowd, amazing designers from all around the world are going to compete for your project. You choose the winner, then you get that design plus revisions. I've literally sold thousands of these designs on my website and I got them all made through Design Crowd. If you're interested, head over to designcrowd.com forward slash apparel to learn about the special offer that I have for you or just use the discount code apparel when you post a project on Design Crowd. So I basically have this tendency to look at people and just be fascinated by what makes them tick, what are their base level needs and desires, what they view as valuable, what their values are. I don't know. I just have this like inherently in me. It's like, I guess the intellectual side of me. And I've really applied this to my clothing brand and to other clothing brands that I've worked with. And so I want to talk to you about these five main psychology tricks and hacks that I've noticed in all these big brands that are successful. The first one is social proof. If you look at a company like Nike, there's a reason why Tiger Woods, LeBron James, and Michael Jordan are the only three athletes in the history of time that have $1 billion contracts with Nike. There's a reason why Nike is paying them $1 billion and sealed them up for life. And it's because having these very, very high status people that are literally like the top athletes in the world represent their athletic brand. There's nothing more valuable than having that as an asset for your company. And so Nike recognizes this. I've also seen this like with my own eyes and my own clothing brand. My brand is obviously on a much, much smaller scale than something like Nike, but I run a lifestyle brand here in Canada and I've had multiple celebrities and micro influencers from rural Canada rock my brand and support me, like dozens of them. And just the impact that that's had on my brand and my ability to get sales and my ability to create buy-in from my customers and just have people sort of automatically find my brand cool and look up to my brand is just been absolutely insane. And so that's one way of getting social proof. Another way to get social proof is just to build up a big following on social media. Like if you're looking at my YouTube right now, I've got over 100,000 subscribers. That's probably clicked in your head versus if I only had like two subscribers, you probably wouldn't be as interested in subscribing or following this channel. You'd be like, who the hell is this guy? And so it creates a certain level of credibility. And then the last one would be just getting customers, showing that you already have customers and that other people are already supporting you even if they're not high status, if you have a big enough volume of that, then it literally checks a box in the brains of the people who are moving their way down the funnel to potentially buying from your brand. And as they're going through this and learning more about your brand, they're discovering that, hey, your brand's actually cool, it's actually thriving. And this is likely all happening subconsciously. They're not processing this like at the forefront of their brain, but it's just easing that friction and making it so much easier to get sales. The second crazy powerful psychological principle that all these brands that are crushing it are using all the time is known as scarcity. Scarcity is basically where people tend to value things more that are rare and that are in limited supply. And so if you look at a brand like Supreme, there's a very calculated reason why they only offer a limited number of stock in all of the products that they're releasing. And it's because there's such a big demand for these items and when they only offer a certain amount, it creates scarcity. It makes those items more rare to have, which massively increases the value of those products. Another way that you can apply scarcity is in the actual time of how long that product is offered or how long a sale is being offered. I've used this a ton of times within my own clothing brand and you likely have as well. Like if you're doing a Black Friday sale, 
The reason why Black Friday sales crush is obviously number one because of the time of year, people's buying temperatures are way up. But number two is that there's a limited amount of time that those offers are existing. And so it really creates a sense of urgency for people that need to pull the trigger in order to actually capitalize on the offer that you're presenting. And so offering scarcity is something that is absolutely huge when it comes to your marketing strategy and being able to get more results for your brand. The third psychological phenomenon that these big clothing brands are using to their advantage is known as anchoring. Anchoring is where people tend to take the first piece of information about your products and use that as a reference point when they're making decisions. And if that didn't make sense to you, I'm sure you'll understand this on an intuitive level. So the first piece of information that somebody might get about your brand is they come to your website and they see that your products are $80. Like all of your hoodies are $80, the first ones that they see. And they go, okay, these are 80 bucks. It's kind of, it's kind of expensive for me. And then just slightly down the page, maybe you're offering some hoodies for like 64 or $60. And they go, oh, I actually like that one. And it's only $64. Sweet, I'm gonna buy that hoodie. And then they go and they buy that hoodie. This happens very often. I'm sure it's likely happened to you if you're going online and shopping. Well, that $64 hoodie, if that was the only thing that was on the website and those other $80 hoodies weren't there to adjust the perception of those hoodies, you may have looked at the $60 hoodie right away and said, ooh, the $60 hoodie, that's pretty expensive. I don't know if I can, if I can afford that right now. And it's only because it's in comparison to that first piece of information. Brands use this all the time. It's also really powerful when you're having a sale because people will see the regular price that they'll anchor it at, and then they'll see the sale price, and that's what gives them that sort of buying satisfaction when they actually purchase the product is like, oh, I got a win out of this. This is actually me getting a deal. You know, I'm actually kind of in a weird sense, stealing from this brand or taking it. I'm actually getting something that is a win in terms of the value that I'm receiving. And so that's a huge one that big brands use. The fourth psychological principle that big brands use is brand identity. And this is less of a hack and more of something that's absolutely necessary to have within your brand in order for you to succeed. What big brands understand is that people tend to form emotional connections with brands that align with their values, beliefs, and interests. And so some great examples of this is like a surfing brand that where they recognize that their audience is likely going to be more free-spirited people, people who care about the environment. And so a surfing brand that is also taking into it the values of like donating 10% of its profits to helping clean the oceans. Or, you know, Ten Tree is a great example of a brand that's all about restoring the environment and planting trees so that, you know, we keep the earth healthy and all that stuff really resonates with their target audience and with their with the values and the beliefs of their audience. I'm also a great example of this because my clothing brand is a lifestyle brand in rural Canada, and it's all about the humor here and really connecting with the values of what it's like to live in rural Canada and all of the beliefs associated with rural Canada. And so connecting on that emotional level, connecting on an identity level is just like a huge and important part of growing a successful brand. And the fifth psychology principle that I literally just applied to my own clothing brand is decision paralysis. Okay, this is where people tend to get kind of overwhelmed when they're shopping if there's too many options. It prevents them from being able to make a decision and they sometimes just won't even pull the trigger on it. And so I've literally just discontinued 33 products from my own clothing brand. And one of the reasons for this is because if you offer all of these different products, sometimes people just get overwhelmed and they can't really make a decision on what they want and they never really come back. Like you can imagine a website where if you had 50 products on one page, and that was your entire website, it was just all of your products on one page, it would look kind of sloppy and it would create too much like overwhelm and people would click off. And so being reasonable with it on your website in terms of how you're displaying your products, how many are being displayed at any given time will really help you when it comes to your ability to make sales. If consumer behavior and all this psychology stuff really interests you, I made a banger video on this about a year ago called How Buying Decisions Are Made that you can check out after this video. And I really hope that you enjoyed this one and that it really helps you run your clothing brand a lot better. If you're thinking about starting up a clothing brand or you're already running one, I just recorded a 100% free clothing brand course. It has literally every aspect of growing a brand. All you have to do to get access is go to freeclothingcourse.com and you can go through it at your own pace and I hope you enjoy.